Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our YouTube channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this particular video is actually going to find you guys in good health. Personally, as you can see, I'm fine. Kisumu is also fantastic. Maybe you could also let me know where you are watching the video from. The county or the country in case you are out of the republic. And by the way, for this particular video, I'm going to take the first two hours just responding to each and every comment you are going to post on this particular video. So please, after listening to the video, drop your comment. Ladies and gentlemen, William Samuel Raputo, the president of the Republic of Kenya, who is also the UDA party leader, is a worried man. William Ruto is worried because cracks have actually started emerging in Kenya Kwanzaa. For those who follow the politics of this country very closely, in fact, I wanted to do a video about it a few weeks ago. The Kiambu women representative, Wamushomba, was on Spice FM. And during that show, Wamushomba revealed certain information which actually shocked me and those who follow the politics of this country very closely. According to Wamushomba on that particular show, William Ruto and Rigadi Gashagwa actually got them not to talk about one man, one vote, one shilling. Because according to them, those who are projects of Uru Muge Kenyatta and therefore they should not be talking about it. And she was defiant that nobody was going to stop her from talking about one man, one vote, one shilling. Yesterday, William Ruto was in uh, Muranga County during the burial of David Waweru Nete, who is the father to the Dagoretti South Member of Parliament, John Kieria. During that funeral program, almost each and every leader who stood up to speak spoke about one man, one vote, one shilling. That was in total defiance of William Ruto's order. When William Ruto rose to speak because he had been challenged, he never talked about one man, one vote, one shilling. So that clearly showed you, or shows you, that there is kind of cracks in um, UDA. A few weeks ago, or is it now months, there were reports that William Ruto had stopped the deputy president, Rigedi Gashagwa, from meeting leaders from the mountain. By that time, I think Mudabadi had met some lawyer leaders, you know, they had started meeting like that, and Ruto told them, no meeting. If you want to meet Mount Kenya leaders, MPs, senators, as Rigedi Gashagwa, you must seek for permission from you. Why do you think William Ruto was putting that kind of caveat? It's because there were cracks. He also feared the possibility of something like that blowing up and he was not going to be able to take control of, of uh, UDA. That's why he told them, regarding Gashagwa, you cannot meet members of parliament in the name of Mount Kenya Parliamentary Group meeting. So that, that's, that was a sign. Again, just recently, you know what happened? There was the raid at Uru Kenyatta's private farm in Ruiru, Noblands. Then there is this attempt to grab Jubilee Party from Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. All those initiatives are actually funded by none other than William Ruto and Rigadi Ashagwa. So members of parliament from the mountain are actually not happy. Some of them are speaking in low tones against the mistreatment Uhuru Kenyatta is being subjected to. And some are actually talking publicly like the Muranga women representative, Betty Maina, was very vocal that Kanini Kega should respect Uhuru Kenyatta and they should let Uhuru Kenyatta be. And then today, again, I was reading some article, I think was it in the Star or some other article, that members of parliament from Jubilee Party are actually against the finance bill. Some of them, and they're loud about it. And then there are some who are against the house levy. I think there was one from uh, 
two or three from the Rift Valley. William Ruto is facing that challenge that his authority is actually being challenged in UDA. So in this video, I want us to look at why we are witnessing this kind of rebellion and defiance in Kenya Kwanza and in UDA in particular. Before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is now. Let us get straight to the points. And because time is not on our, on our side, let me begin with the first reason. I think and I strongly believe that the ground is actually shifting against UDA and what they believe there. You know, Uhuru Kenyatta, for example, told the mountain that let's secure one man, one vote, one shilling. They never listened. So recently, bursaries were being distributed. Certain regions could give bursaries up to almost 30,000. In the mountain, we, we witnessed people collapsing online and then going home without bursaries. In fact, the leaders from that region are feeling that in most cases, they end up giving a maximum of two or 3,000. Because of the one man, one vote, one shilling. But Ruto fears that if he were to push for that, some people will put him to account. Because that's something Uru Kenyatta pushed for. And that's why he's been telling these leaders, don't talk about one man, one vote, one shilling. So the ground is shifting. And because the ground is shifting, you see, sometimes when you, you are looking for vote, votes, you can use all tricks and methods. So these guys from the mountain and other parts of the, of the Republic campaigned and they told people what was good for them. I mean, what, what they wanted to hear, including lies. Now the reality has caught with them. And because the ground is shifting, the ground was totally against Uru Kenyatta at that particular time. Now the ground is not totally against Uru Kenyatta. So some of them are feeling the pinch. So that's number one. Number two, there's also the political reality. Politics is local. The reality is that Mount Kenya believed very strongly, for example, that they were going to have total control over this government. So far, we've seen appointments being done by William Ruto's government. We've seen several other things happening. And clearly, the mountain are feeling that indeed they don't own this government. And because politics is local, some of them are now trying to align themselves to what the local residents are telling them. For example, there are people who strongly believe in the Rift Valley that the house levy is not going to be beneficial to them. If you are earning 30,000 and you are being deducted 3%, how much is that? That amount of money can never and will never buy you a house, even if you were to work for how many years. So if you are 36 years now, or 40 years, and you are earning that amount of money, and someone is telling you he's going to buy you a house, it means that will not be the reality. So political reality is catching up. And we are now aligning. Some people are opening their eyes now. Number three, there is this restive Mount Kenya. Mount Kenya is not sitting pretty. They are not comfortable. They feel William Ruto is trying to shortchange them. But because of their attitudes towards Uhuru Kenyatta, they, are not coming, they were not able to come out early. So what they are using now is blackmail. They are using blackmail to corner, to corner Ruto, for example. So they have to talk about one man, one vote, one shilling. You told them about their coffee. You told them about their employment. You go to, to Western Kenya. What are you offering them? So the blackmail is coming in. 
and number 4 is Kenya kwanza failure the truth of the matter and William Ruto will have to deal with it is that as at now Kenya kwanza has failed that's why Rigathi Gachagua was mad with that newspaper report putting them to account on what they told Kenya they were going to do and they've not done and because of the Kenya kwanza failures majority of those who voted for it members of parliament who campaigned for it are feeling the heat from their supporters which means they must start thinking some of them are talking some of them are saying okay this is not the way to go and lastly i think there is now open defiance people have started defying ruto previously nobody in uda would attempt would dream or even dare think about defying ruto that's why someone like rigathi gachago was told do not meet mount kenya members of parliament he can't do that that's why they were told you cannot talk about one man one vote one shilling they could not talk about it but now we are witnessing defiance they are now defying which means people like wamushomba can now go to tv can go to radio and tell ruto that you have voted by our people and our people are telling us what they want is one man one vote one shilling what are you doing about it if you're not doing anything about it please just take a walk i don't know what you think that's my take thank you guys and may you have a good day bye bye